What we're doing today and why we're doing this operation with feeding our community is because we have an extended closure of our schools. This could happen for any number of reasons. You could have a, a natural disaster in your community. In this case, it's a long-term closure. And when those times happen, we feel it's important to continue to feed our community. A few things have changed with the standard distribution method. So originally we were doing this food prep every single day and now we're doing that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, there is still hot food prep on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, which is when we distribute our food, but we are splitting our shifts. We have found that the hot food offering has been really well received by our community and it's been a kind of a game changer for our staff as well. So originally we were doing a five day a week distribution and now we have switched to three days a week of distribution and we're handing out multiple meals at a time. The other thing we've done is we've separated our assembly line areas and we've separated those stations also by six feet, the physical distance requirement that we're currently operating under. So once the bags are assembled, they're loaded on carts in this area, and then we have a runner, and the runner comes and gets this food and it's loaded into wagons. Uh, that runner takes the food out to the point of distribution, and then our folks that are working in the point of distribution actually unload the carts. So the runner never touches any of the food um, that's going to get close to the car. So they're literally just moving the food back and forth. Anything that goes out to the curb for the point of distribution before it comes back into the kitchen, it is also wiped out. We use disinfectant wipes, so we're wiping down the trays, we're wiping down the carts, and the runner is doing that. So the runner that does not have contact with the public, they're the person that then cleans those trays, cleans those carts, they re-sanitize their hands, and they come in to load the carts and bring in more food. So again, just trying to create barriers or degrees of separation between what's happening in that car with our community uh, versus what we're doing in the food preparation area. One of the things that has also changed recently in the standard distribution method is the actual point of distribution itself. So originally we had our District 12 staff reaching into the car and handing bags to people in the car. We have since changed that model as a result of the requirements of physical and um, social distancing. The other person I have in that space is an accountability person. Um, that person is keeping the tally of the food. Hi, four. Four? Okay. okay, and you want to pull up as close to the table as you can get. Okay. That number of meals is put onto a table, that car pulls up close to that table, and then people in the car reach through their window to grab the meals and put it into their car. We're about one hour in and we've served 1,346 meals so far today. We ask that every person at the point of distribution are wearing gloves, and then before they're allowed to remove those gloves, they have to use just a light coat of hand sanitizer. So it's not a full squirt, uh, it's just a little bit, and you just clean, the, you, you wipe that on your gloves before you remove the gloves. Then you remove the gloves, throw the gloves away, and then immediately apply hand sanitizer to your bare hands. Hand washing in this case is always our preferred method, so they are instructed to go find hand washing at the conclusion of their shift once they've removed their gloves for the final time. When we originally started, we had a three hour window for our community to come get their food. We tracked our meal count, we were tracking our volume, and we realized by the third week that we could reduce that uh, window of service to two hours. We have applied for multiple waivers from the Colorado Department of Education. So we currently have a plus four rule that we're trying to follow. So if you have four kids in your car and you've asked for eight meals, the state has given us a waiver to provide those additional four meals to a car. The other things that we've had to do is also seek waivers for some of the food that we are in short supply of. By the second week of operation, we were starting to see shortages in things like sliced bread, milk. Some of those things have been challenging to get for us, so we have asked for waivers from the Colorado Department of Education as well uh, to get waivers on not having to necessarily include those things in every single meal. The fourth week has been kind of the magic week now. We really feel like we have a good handle on our particular distribution method and what it's going to look like. We have a good handle on meal volume each day and that's really allowed us to just optimize our operation. We've been here for two hours and we gave out a total of 2,004 meals. Yay!